the Zika virus. Now there's been lots and lots of press about it recently. There have been some cases in UK. The Olympic Games are going to be between the 5th and the 21st of August of, of 2016. But the Zika virus occurs in other countries where our patients go regularly. So it's worth just having a little review of where we are with it. So the Zika virus, what do we know about it? It was found first or described first in 1947 in Uganda. And its first uh, host was monkeys, which, you know, we're saying, you know, this is why monkeys have been used traditionally long term in experiments, because they do harvest viruses uh, very easily. And we talked last year, I think, um, about the Ebola virus. And it's transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And the importance about the, this mosquito is it's the same one that, does den that carries dengue fever, but it bites during the day. Traditional mosquitoes that tend to carry things like malaria tend to bite at dawn and dusk. So our mosquito advice has always been about, you know, making sure that the windows and the doors were closed at dawn and dusk, making sure that you don't go out during those periods, or if you do go out, that you make sure that your skin is covered and you've got plenty of um, pesticide. But the Aedes mosquito bites during the day, and that's a problem. It's too cold for the, in UK for the Aedes mosquito, which is a great relief. However, we have had cases of Zika confirmed in the UK to date. Mainly Zika in its original format, so not brought in by humans, but, but being transmitted in epidemic proportions, is in South and Central America and Pacific regions and many of the Caribbean islands, which is something we, we don't think about with a lot of our patients going there. It's mainly a mild illness and often people just think that they've had a mild cold or a flu-like illness or have had very few symptoms at all. The incidence is extremely uncertain. Um, however, there's been at least half a million cases of Brazil in Brazil last year. And that's, of course, where uh, the Rio Olympics are being held. And the Rio Olympics are being held at 32 venues and five football stadiums. And so uh, members of our practice population are going to be going to these areas. And there's no doubt that we are going to see people in the next few months who've been exposed to Zika virus. So how do you catch it? It's mainly by mosquitoes but it can be transmitted sexually. The sexual transmission rate is much higher from men to women than it is the other way around. It can be uh, transferred in blood transfusions. And for this reason, anyone going to a, a Zika um, potential area in UK won't be able to donate blood for 28 days. And we certainly believe that Zika virus can be, uh, can be vertically transmitted through uh, the placenta. What symptoms do people with Zika? Well, they're not particularly helpful. They're the ones that you would, you would associate it with flu-like and cold illnesses. So a high fever or temperature, uh, headache, muscle aches and joint aches, painful or itchy eyes, feeling of weakness and tiredness, an itchy rash, peripheral edema, um, or a gastrointestinal upset. So there's nothing specifically there, like some of the other illnesses we, we saw over the winter that, you know, we're talking about scarlet fever or measles that would just let us pin it down to Zika. So quite a difficult thing to diagnose from the symptoms. And the complications. Now, there's been a lot in the press about the microcephaly, um, particular, particularly in Brazil, and there was a 20 times increase in microcephaly in Brazil during the outbreak of Zika. However, that's not necessarily happened in other countries where there have been outbreaks. But I think it's fair to say at the moment we assume that microcephaly has been caused by the Zika virus. The other associations are Guillain-Barre, and these are quite rare. Um, in French Polynesia in 2013, there was a study of 42 patients who had Guillain-Barre, which was a lot higher than would have been expected in the general population, and all of them tested positive for the Zika virus. The other rare complication is, is meningitis. So what are we saying to pregnant women? Um, the advice to pregnant women is to avoid travel to Zika areas, and there is a list of those areas on the Health Protection Agency website. The other place that people look um, is the Foreign Office website. And having had a look on there in the last couple of days, actually their main focus, although there's a brief mention of Zika, is more about um, civil unrest and striking and violent crime than there is about Zika. And that may be, um, you know, potentially more of a threat than there is the Zika, but however. 
So what, what are we saying? Avoiding going to Zika areas, avoiding unprotected intercourse with any man coming back from a Zika infected area for at least 28 days. But, but if they've had a confirmed infection or, they, or they've had some sort of flu-like illness over the period of time that they were there to avoid unprotected intercourse for six months. For any pregnant woman that has traveled to a Zika area, they should send urine and blood tests and that arrangement, interestingly, the Health Protection Agency's advice is to come and see us as GPs, so we may well be asked this, is that urine and blood tests should be sent um, in conjunction with your local labs to something called the, um, to RIPL, R-I-P-L, which is the Rare and Imported Pathogens Laboratory, uh, which is part of Public Health England. Um, in the non-pregnant, um, male and females, then once again, in conjunction with your local lab, you should be sending blood samples to the, um, the uh, rare and imported pathogens lab. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? So what, what advice are we giving about mosquitoes, how to avoid it? Well, the first one is don't go. Um, wearing light clothes, covering arms and legs during the day as well as at night because of this Aegis risk of biting during the day, using mosquito repellents, particularly those that have active content of DEET, making sure that you apply mosquito repellent after sun cream because that it seems to affect the mosquito repellent and it seems to, to, it seems to wipe it off, and using mosquito nets um, around bedding and, and mosquito window screens.